Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. My name is Connie. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So we're going to talk today about my Oz side of my diary. So this is Mzansi Oz Diary. So we're moving to Dananda. Oi, oi, Ozzy. Yeah. Now, what is happening in Australia? So today, uh, there is a story that's relevant to south africa so i chose this story because it will be more relatable to south africans who are at home who want to know the comparison with the key issues about migration integration uh in the last few videos i've been posting uh uh, in relation to the tragic death of those six kids and that it sort of alluded to you guys a lot of it's to do with illegal migration and it was to do with uh, stuff failure like in integrations and all of that this stuff that mainstream media was saying is xenophobia i didn't feel it is xenophobia I feel like it's more of the the integration failure and yeah and some cu cultural clash of certain groups when they are migrating to south africa so this one is different, obviously, is to do with uh, racial discrimination in Australia. Very um, public one because it involves two senators, Australian senators, from far party, far right, far left. So far right, you know, Hansen, Senator Hansen, far left, Senator Sharuki. So they, the story is about them and we're going to play this clip because it's relevant to what I'm going to discuss and provide you some differences in Australia and South Africa. So let's go. Let's listen in now. We begin with historic news from the federal court. Queensland Senator and One, Le One Nation leader Pauline Hanson has been found guilty of racially discriminating Senator Maureen Faruqi. The Greens deputy leader says this is a win for everyone who's been told to go back to where they came from. Hanson says she is deeply disappointed by the judgment and plans to appeal. Ali Donaldson has more. Well, Narelda, this is a huge loss for Pauline Hanson. The judge today ruling her tweet was offensive, racist and humiliating. It did not fall under reasonable comment or was done in good faith. He's ordered her to take it down within the next seven days and also to pay costs, which Senator Faruqi's team say will run into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. But this was never a case about money. The second message is that Senator Faruqi should piss off back to Pakistan. That is a variant of the slogan, go back to where you came from. The expert evidence establishes that that is a racist trope with a long history. It carries with it historical anti-immigrant and nativist beliefs with roots in Australia that are traceable to the white Australia policy. It is a strong form of racism. With breaking news, the Federal Court has just ruled Senator Pauline Hanson breached the Racial Discrimination Act over a tweet the judge slammed as profoundly insulting. Annalise Bolt is following the story for us. Annalise, talk us through the ruling. Sophie, this all centres on a tweet made by Senator Hanson back in September 2022 where she told fellow Senator Maureen Faruqi to quote, piss off back to Pakistan. The, a federal court judge has just ruled that that tweet was deeply offensive and insulting and that it was not done reasonably, even remarking that Senator Hanson has a tendency to say things which are racist and Islamophobic. Here is some of that judgment. Her tweet was an angry personal attack on Senator Faruqi with no discernible content or comment the court has found that Senator Hanson's tweet was not reasonable or in good faith or a fair comment. So as you have heard from that clip, uh, judgment of that tweet that was, uh, as a tweet that was tweeted, uh, the Senator Hanson tweeted that tweet towards the Senator Shiruki and Senator Shiruki went to the High Court and to um, argue that this was a racial verification. Okay, so the, in this case, the, the court ruled in Senator Faruqi's favour. Okay, so now let's, let's, let's actually start from this clip of it is rooted in white Australia 
policy, why the court was saying that. So this is relevant for people, obviously, international and South Africans. Uh, if you, so Immigration Restriction Act 1901. Australia had an Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. So it was a piece of legislation uh, that for which had a favoritism towards white Australia migration. So, 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 so it was adopted as a white Australia policy. That's what it was called, white Australia policy. It used a dictation test in any European languages. Um, often to, to it uh, was chosen at random to exclude non-European immigrants. So it's especially targeting of people of Asian, Pacific Islander and African descent. So that act was in place in, from 1901, okay? It also followed a Pacific Islander uh, Labour Act of 1901. So that act forcibly deported thousands of Pacific Islander uh, labourers who were working uh, in a sugar plantation in Queensland. So they were barred from immigrating or to, to or staying in Australia. That is the Pacific Islander Labour Act of 1901. Okay, they also with the same immigration restriction, this, is, this fall, falls under that Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. So what the, the judgment, when the, the court, the judge says that in that clip, it's referring to this here. So I'm giving you the background of the act, the legislation. So under that Immigration Restric Restriction Act of 1901, so I told you about Pacific Islander Labour Act. So people were called Kanakas. Yep, those one. And then you have the naturalization and citizenship restrictions, whereby non-European were uh, often excluded from gaining Australian citizenship and naturalization, which meant they couldn't enjoy uh, civil rights on property in some cases or bring family uh, family members uh, into the country, into Australia. They, they couldn't do that under this Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. So there were exclusion of non-European migrants Preference were given to British and European migrants and, un and undesirable races. They had undesirable races, particular from Asia, Pacific, and Africa. So, and also uh, were discouraged or outright banned. So, undesirable race, if you're black like me, if you're, you were Asian, if you were, um, yeah, classified as un desirable and then that act you were banned from entering Australia. Okay, that is under that white Australia policy that the judge is referring to and the the act itself was Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. Okay, so they also under that act they also had assimilation policies for non-European residents. So those few non-European uh, were allowed. There was a little bit of few of them that were allowed. And those one who were allowed were forced to assimilate under these policies. That means they had restriction in, in the culture. They couldn't practice the culture. They couldn't speak their languages. Uh, so that was a forced assimilation. So people weren't doing it freely, were forced to do so. And if they were found to be speaking their language, practicing their culture, that wasn't allowed under this act. So. They also, number six, they also had populate or perish with Europeans. Populate or perish, okay? That was after World War II. The Australian promoted immigration with a slogan called populate or perish. This uh, slogan heavily favoured European and British immigrants to build up the population of Australia, okay? So these are these... Um, uh, that's what we mean that this is the Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. So when the judge said this, the, that when that tweet, 
that Pauline Hansen wrote uh, to, uh, referring to Senator Sharuki was rooted in this racist policies of Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. So, fast forward, so in 1958, uh, there was a Mi Migration Act of 1958. So that one actually sort of introduced a universal system of migration and removing previous uh, racial distinctions. They just removed previous racial distinction in that, in 1958. So there was also ministerial discretion there. So minister could allow certain groups of maybe of African or Pacific Islander, Asian to enter Australia. So it was in a, a ban as per Immigration Restriction Act of 1901. This was Migration Act of 1958. So, and then there was also deportation, established grants for deportation. So that grant for deportation included, um, you know, criminal activity. And if someone had breached their visa, obviously that's, you know, no brainer there. That's if you do that, you should be deported, even today. In most countries, you would be deported if you commit crime. All right, so, and then it had a non-discriminatory policy in that, that is Migration Act of 1958. Uh, so that one was moving towards a non-racial approach to immigration, shifting away from white Australia policy that is referred to to this judgment. Um, and then it was also a visa, there was also visa requirements, set out requirements to entry, stay, work rights, and so on. And an entry permit we introduced um, so I've written all of this here so I can guys read um, so I don't have to be, uh, you know, lose my train of thought. Yeah. So and also that some visa bridging and they also they introduced health and character checks. Uh, this one instituted a mandatory health and character assessment for migrants. There was also asylum and refugee protection created a framework for asylum seekers uh, through those uh, through these ones, the asylum seekers have evolved over time, and we you know told you about the the board people that was essentially it's illegal migration that South Africa is going to. We had that own illegal migration, which is really is more about people smuggling than anything else. Actually, that one is what you're experiencing right now, South Africans. Yeah, good luck on that. And you also have, they also had citizenship pathway and established guidelines for permanent residency and pathway to citizenship. Um, yes, so really that Migration Act of 1958, it really aimed at actually uh, introducing, introducing a fairer, immigration system based on skills needs rather than race, setting the foundation for Australia's modern migration policies. So it's so they abolished that and then they introduced that. So however, um, so these ones, I can give you a history about uh, the, you know, why it was introduced. Obviously, following the World War II, um, the shift uh, was due to the labor shortages uh, and so that's why they began introducing these um, uh, reforms because there wasn't enough laborer to uh, to cover for what was needed to you know to uh, have the Australia that we enjoy today so that was in 1949 that uh, uh, then the Prime Minister uh, Ben Schiffle allowed a limited number of nine European who had lived in Australia for at least 15 years to apply for citizenship that was in 1949 so uh, that a limited number of those were also allowed um, by the minister Ben Shifley. Uh, yeah, post World War Two because of labour shortages, and then they then include introduced that uh, Migration Act of 1958. 
That one was passed by Robert Menzies. Um, that one minister, Prime Minister Robert Menzies passed that act. And that one that uh, in 1960, they also introduced a skilled immigration by Prime Minister Harold Holt. Um, that one uh, also, yeah, also with that in 1961, is also allowed some non-European immigrants with skills, qualification or family ties to settle in Australia. That was still, although it was still limited uh, for non-European, it was a, a small amount. So it was really kind of like really control how many non-European they wanted. So it was limited, but it's still nonetheless allowed non-European to settle in the 1960s um, into Australia. So in 1973, the Whitlam government and 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 then uh, abolished or uh, abolished the racial criteria for uh, for migration. So that's the of uh, Whitlam government. So he formally abolished that criteria for my racial migration into Australia. That was in 1973. Then they introduced a policy that was called multiculturalism, promoting cultural diversity within Australian society. So, and then, so that was in 1973, uh, two years later, they had to introduce a legal framework. So, all of these was policies, but, you know, that was not, there was no legal from framework. We know when you have legal, legal is, be, it's not about ethics. So, it's a le legal it's the first thing you have to obl oblige to. It's the law of the land. So the legal framework was introduced to Racial Discrimination Act of 1975. So that it means that it abolishes all form of discrimination within the Australian society based on the ground of race, colour, descent, nationality, ethnicity. It's also involve now religion modern one religion also involve the sex uh, sexual orientation that is also in here now the racial discrimination act of 1975 and then so that was still introduced by Gough Whitlam. That was Gough Luke Whitlam. And, and then, uh, yeah, so this one, the Racial Discrimination Act, which th was the judgment that was based on in this judgment, uh, it is a legal framework, obviously. Like I said, you know, before it was just policy, you know, people could still do this and the government could still had a, a way of not you know, complying with this because it was no legal framework about in, w in which these acts had to, you know, these policies had to work on. So the legal framework is what we have today, up until today. So we're still based on that, 1975. Um, so in 1978, they also adopted the multiculturalism, yep, yeah, following the Whitlam and then the Fraser government also continue with that. You know, you want to have continuation of policy. You know, you don't want to be, you know, shifting from one to the other. So otherwise you won't get anywhere. You know, you see that with the ANC stuff I've been telling you about, that one minister enter, leaves the other one, the other one leaves, the other one doesn't continue and with the same policy and or even improve it. They start something new, it's, you don't get anywhere when you do that. So it was a continuation, obviously, as you can see that. So from one prime minister to the next, which is what you want, isn't it? You want that. So um, so I said to you, they with the white Australia policy, they had a dictation test. What is dictation test? So the... <laughs> The dictation test really it was the, it was an exclusion test. It wasn't assessing anything that people, their competency, their skills. It was just a way to exclude people. It'd be like testing every migrant who come to Australia, sorry, to South Africa, and, and ask them to do to write a language in Afrikaans or write in Sizulu. <laughs>
uh yeah so that similar but you know kind of like you know anyway this dictation test what it meant really honestly it meant that you know they were asking people to, to they would choose any language european language okay it was up to that officer to choose any language uh people have to write in that 50 passages or in that language uh you know in although english english was mostly commonly used but the officer could choose any language it could be french any european language it could, it could be german european languages would be chosen or you know to, because it was exclusion to exclude people it wasn't because they wanted to test their literacy skills. It was just to get people who are European. Okay. Uh, over time, so even with people who, even people from Europe, if they come from undesirable European countries, they also would be used because they want to exclude them from settling into Australia. That this is what it was called dictation test anyway. If it it falls under that white Australia policy. So this is a background I'm trying to I'm giving you about the migration in Australia, how it's evolved. As you can see with this story of the two ladies, it's not always a perfect union. But we try our best to coexist and respect one another. The most important thing is to respect the law. Uh, so because this Immigration Act of 1958 is a law, so you could cannot discriminate like, based on nationality, race, and, and color. Because of her, uh, the court, because it rules that, because she's Pakistanian and she's immigrant so that her saying that she'd piss off and go back to Pakistan it means that because she's none she considered and looked at her as non-Australian because based of her race and this is uh it's historic because we've never actually had a judgment like this in Australia this is the first one but a costly one so imagine if you are a person that works uh, every day and you get this sort of words being uttered towards you, how would you be able to do that yourself and to have your cases heard in Australian court? That would be so difficult for average person to be able to uh, go and to put a case because it's expensive, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, Obviously, she's a senator, she'd be able to afford it, but for everyday person who are experiencing racial discrimination every day in the society, in Australia, in the workplace, whatsoever, it'd be so difficult for that person to be able to uh, go to the court and have their case heard. So this judgment, yeah, it's one to be looked at and to say there is a difference here, distinguish between free speech and racial uh, taught tormenting people based on their race and commenting that are not based are not fair uh, yeah so that's all I want us to say on this case and yeah give you some insight so you guys know what racism is everywhere so yep so South Africa, you abolished apartheid in 1994. So it's not still, you're still very a baby compared to when this white Australia policy was abolished. So, you know, and it's a while ago, but we're still having issues even today. So for you, South African, even if you see problems that are happening in your country, and you feel like you're still some community that are living somewhere outside of, you know, the mainstream, like these people are talking about, those community in Aledi, it is it's still an ongoing issues that every politician must commit to address because those these things are historic anyway. We know that they are historic. Trauma continues, and so we need to be 
blunt and address these issues with all fairness anyway so thank you guys for listening and if you're new here please consider subscribing and till next time thank you have a lovely day bye for now senator hansen has many things to apologize for which he hasn't done so i'm not expecting anything but i think the case today has set such a precedent that it will be a warning to people like Senator Hansen and others. They will be held accountable for the hate speech that comes out of their mouths. So this judgment really does set a new line in the sand when it comes to freedom of speech versus racist speech in this country.